Welcome back to the Rugby Connection Podcast, the only fan-run podcast to get all the ins and outs from the rugby world. Well, summer test rugby is pretty much finished. The series is over and there's so much to talk about. So joining me is the proud Irishman, that is Andy, and the Queen of New Zealand herself, Ella. Thank you so much for coming on, everyone. How are we getting on? Who ever wants to go first? Oh, we're waiting for each other. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very we well, mate. Very well, mate. How are you? Two, both of us happy after the weekend, right? Yeah, absolutely. Ah. Two winners. Two mm. winners. Three winners. Three. Three I winners. Won. <laughs> nobody talks about it. It's fine. It's fine. We'll just get that out of the way because nobody talks about it. It's okay. It's all good. Scotland won. Yay. 42 7 over USA. Cool. There's not much to say. The, the weather was horrifically hot and humid. So everyone thought we were going to get a hundred pointer, and we didn't because nobody can catch the ball because it was that <laughs> point. the moisture. It, it looked horrific to play in. I was like, no, thank you. But you and Ashman getting a hat trick, so the mall works very well. Duhan van der Merwe has now matched Stuart Hogg with twenty seven tries, so it's inevitable. He is going to break the record. It's just a matter of when and who against. So yeah, that's all I really have to say on the tour. On the Scotland end, we go to the South American tour next because we've got Chile this weekend, which is one more interesting, actually, I think. Mm. I, d- I was surprised that Scotland's scoreline, it felt low, but na- now that you say about the humidity, that does make sense. And for at least at least America got a try, you know? At least there was something in there for them to cheer. A try from an Italian as well. It wasn't even... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a really weird game because America was really physical, but nothing to hand was working mm. and like AJ McGinty missed a sitter off the off the tee and I was like that's not like him either but I don't know I'll take the win two for two on the tour happy days it's such a weird tour I can't criticise or proper di- dive into it proper because it's that is what it is it's a developmental tour well, with a, with a first team squad, though, that's we've what's so strange team, about it. <laughs> yeah, we've got a first team against USA. I think that was just for revenge. I can't see anything <laughs> else because somehow we lost to the USA in 2018. So I think that was just Townsend, like, like get this off my back. Mm. But he was frustrated as well. The players were frustrated. I was like, right. so just a shit game all round with <laughs> a generous scoreline. So don't just pretend words, I don't Harry. have don't <laughs> it. Was, it was just a very clunky game. Nothing seemed to George Horn's try was very nice. I'll give them that. The actual attacking set piece for that to come off worked really well. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it was the weather or I don't know. It just felt like something was missing. But I'll take the one. Anyway, we'll go into the proper test series now. We've got Australia versus Wales. Wallabies well, get the sweep. Just. Just is right. Yeah. I don't know where to go for Wales, though. It's after after the game, you sort of feel like it's hard to see where both these teams are going to go because mm-hmm. I don't know how Australia are going to fare in the rugby championship because, like, this isn't... It's not a particularly strong Wales team at the moment, like, we all know that. And Australia got ran relatively close in both games. So... You know, when they go into a rugby championship against South Africa and New Zealand that we've seen are looking uh, at the very least solid, right? <laughs> you know, even if they have their worst day, they're still really good in defence. Structures are really good. So it's hard to imagine Australia having a great time in that tournament. You can definitely see some of the Joe Schmidt influence in there already, some of the detail. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Aussie Flair still, they scored another like full length of the field try, which is pretty amazing mm-hmm. when they went from their own 22. Um and Dungan, then for Wales, 
Sorry, Sorry? Dagunu's second try was just filthy, if you've seen it. So they went to kick well, for they... top. The oh, ball, yeah. And I think Cam went to manage to slap it back in. It was Liam Williams. Ball, it was a Liam Williams that slapped mm. it in. Then there was nobody there, and Dalgana just kept running, picked it up. Thanks, mate. Try. I was like, what just happened? <laughs> but speaking of Wales, the heart and soul is do you like? Keep him. Keep him as captain because <laughs> he wears his heart on his sleeve every game. And I kind of love that in teams, especially when they're not doing well. Yeah, when it was good as well. Mm. Like, he does add a lot when he's in. And I was wondering, watching that second half, like, should Wales just start throwing the ball around a bit? Because mm. if they're going to lose games, like, they've got players who actually can chuck it around and can make stuff happen. <laughs> and they try and play such a tight game plan. It kind of gives them no shot. In a lot of games, like I'd, I'd like to see them open it up a little bit more. What did I see on going around today that Rio Dyer was the player in the Welsh team who had played the most minutes for them this season, which is wild, and it feels like they don't utilize him enough. I think he's a great winger, um, and was a you know made his mark quite well early on the Six Nations times. So yeah, maybe we need to petition Warren Gatland. Um, <laughs> Warren will need some reinventing. Shocker. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we could have petitioned him <laughs> many Very times in the past. <laughs> oh, well, speaking of in the past, is Eddie Jones in the past? Because he's not doing well over in Japan. He's lost his first two games back as Japan head coach. He's lost to the men that worked underneath him at England. <laughs> really enjoyed that segue, by the way, Murray. That was that was Thank great. You. I, I love Thank a you. good segue. Um, yeah, I mean... Look, we were talking about this before recording, but I think everyone was expecting after 2019 for Japan to like really kick on, whatever about Eddie Jones. But, um, you know, the reality was at that tournament, they were the home team. They turned themselves into a club team for a year before the World Cup and they all trained together and played together for a year. They had no superstars, so they could, they could make everybody um, get on the same hymn sheet. And then after 2019, the biggest players went abroad they didn't have the ability to pull people back into camp as often as they wanted. And now they're kind of, you know, as a result, less cohesive. They know each other uh, less well. And it's going to be way harder for them outside of like a home tournament setup to actually get big results against big teams. And I don't think Eddie helps. (laughs) (laughs) I think for anyone to take Eddie Jones on as a head coach after watching what happened during the Rugby World Cup, uh, says a lot. To look at that and be like, now nah, that's our guy. That's our guy. But also, <laughs> obviously, a lot's been made of uh, Rugby League One and how that has really increased in competitiveness. You know, All Blacks have been going over there and saying it's a much better league than people give it credit for. But I still think it'll take a number of years before we see the competitiveness of that competition reflected in their national team, in my opinion. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a very weird setup, though, because... Is, is his mouth getting, like, too big that, like, <laughs> tactics and gameplay can't cash? We're going to run England real close. We're going to be in the top <laughs> four of the world. Shut up. No, you're not. Who are you kidding? <laughs> I don't know why he says stuff like just, that. He's enough of a, like, my favourite phrase is chaos goblin for him. That, like, <laughs> if he says it ten times, you know he'll do it once. You know, like, he'll succeed yeah. at least once. Um, and then he'll be like, I told you, I told you, mate. <laughs> Even though nine other times he's got mad egg on his face. I don't know. We, as much as it probably is, you know, he ruined Australian rugby. He arguably really altered the trajectory of some players' careers in a negative way. Um, you know, you think of Carter Gordon, people like that. Even Michael Hooper and his sending off. <laughs> that side of things is awful. But in terms of the entertainment side of things... Uh, rugby needs a little baby Jones, just a little <laughs> sprinkle of chaos every now and then. It's, it's never a dull moment with Eddie, especially on the pressers, but on field, it's a bit more depressing than sad thought. <laughs> just fair play to Georgia, though, because like, going to Japan is not the easiest of places to go. You've got you get altitude, you get really strong humidity, you get typhoons. Yeah, it's not easy to go to. And, Richard Cockrell, another coach that's very stubborn in his ways, gets the job done. So They'll think they're in with a sniff in Australia this week, I reckon, Georgia. Ooh. I think they reckon they can take them. 
I'm excited for that game because it's very unknown from both ends because I don't know how the coverage is over New Zealand, but we can't watch Georgia games unless they're playing one of us. Mm. So, yeah. and obviously Wallabies is a new head coach, new system, so it's kind of like, let's just dive into them and let's just watch rugby and see what happens. <laughs> they ran them pretty close in the pools in the World Cup. Like I Australia ended that, up. That, that was Eddie's World Cup. That was Eddie's Wallabies, though. <laughs> yeah, but this is like ostensibly a less experienced. Well, no, it's probably it's probably got a bit more experience. But the fact that they ran them close at the World Cup with like Skelton and the big uh, foreign-based yeah. players, I think mm-hmm. they will fancy a pop at them. So there's that no would experience. Be huge. Can you imagine? <laughs> That'd be great It'd for be rugby. Like... Yeah. Well, and it would do wonders for the. Well. People seem to be ignoring it anyway, but I guess the Georgian rugby PR campaign to kind of elevate them <laughs> up into a level of competition that feels appropriate for the for the rugby that they're outputting. So, um, how are they getting the wheels? Hmm? How are they getting the wheels game in the autumn? Because remember, like Georgia just flat out called out Wales. Like, <laughs> we want you to come to Tbilisi in November. And I don't think they but, got it, but I do remember mm, that. Boring. Exactly. It was boring. Wales choked. Great opportunity. You could have just hyped it up. It doesn't have to be the biggest game on the planet. Nah, but if you lose, it's so embarrassing if you lose. It'd be funny. You can. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it'd be funny for the rest of us, but if, if you're in the WRU, like, there's enough gone wrong over the last year. You don't want to be a pretty spectacular own goal to be like, oh, yeah, sure, we'll play, yeah, <laughs> and then take a loss. To be, <laughs> no, to be, I, yeah. I don't think they would lose, to be fair. Like, I do think Georgia is still a bit off. Mm. Uh, bit off the tier ones for the most part, but it'll it'll be an interesting one because if the Aussies lose, it's a real indictment of them and Wales. If the Aussies lose to Georgia, because <laughs> Wales just lost the two test series. <laughs> oh, that'd you be, know, a, that'd be a like... really. Oh, sorry. You know, it would be a really competitive competition if you just put that pool that was all together at the World Cup in one competition. That was a oh, yes, very <laughs> exciting pool. <laughs> Fiji, Wales, Wales Australia, Australia, Georgia. Who else was that? Portugal. Portugal. Oh, uh-huh. there you go. Yes. Yeah, go for it. Yes, why not? I would watch that league for sure. <laughs> we need a name. Someone we need a name it. for the league. The Redemption Top League. I don't know. <laughs> Pro- the Proving Point League. Everyone's got a point to prove. <laughs> That's it, maybe. I like that. That works for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, Wallaby's two to win. George is coming to town. It's gonna to be interesting. Who who do you think is gonna win? I think the Wallabies. I think they will win, but I don't I think, think so they'll too. be comfortable. I think it, I think Georgia might score some nice tries, but it won't be enough. But I don't know. We'll find out. It'll be fun. We will. Be very loose. Be very loose physical rugby. I imagine. Which is the best kind of rugby. But anyway, moving back to the series. <laughs> back to Eden Park, and it is a fortress for a reason. 30 years without a lot. That's just ridiculous to say. Do you know how mental that is? That they have not lost at Eden Park in my lifetime. <laughs> but fair it, play, 24. It, looked, it did look for a while like it might drop. It might fall. And it was very, yes. very scary. It was very touch and go, but... The All Blacks doing what the All Blacks do and get the win. 24-17. And I don't feel like we have to say this, but it does have to get said for this episode. Ben Barrett. Just coming up clutch, coming off the bench casually. Just, yeah, we've got this, boys. Let's run it back like 2015. And just carry the show. <laughs> it was unreal. <laughs> he's 33 years old and he's running about like a 19-year-old. Fair play. I love it. So yeah, good. it's been so an interesting good. discussion point here because I think a lot of people have sort of gone, okay, well, now Bodhi needs to start it at 10 or Bodhi needs to start at 15. But I think my read of it is that Bodhi is the perfect um, impact player and he always has been. And mm. I was talking to my brother-in-law about it and he I don't watch basketball, but he was telling me about the sixth man in basketball, yeah. which is like usually the first player you bring off your bench, specifically to play against tired and fatigued either the first unit or potentially against 
the bench of the other team who may be stricken, second string players. And that's what makes them so effective. So for me, I wholeheartedly think that Bowden Barrett is best off the bench. He'll get a run at 10, potentially this weekend against Fiji. Um, but there's also, you know, Stephen Peter Feta was actually really good in both of those games, I thought. He did not have a bad game at all. So I feel a bit stink for him that people kind of went, oh, well, now Bodhi should start because of that amazing, you know, turn that he had off the bench two games in a row. But the other thing is there's a little old player, just some guy named Will Jordan, who's expected to return <laughs> in time for the rugby championship. We know that he is going to be in Razor's thoughts as our starting fullback. So if you think about it long term, to me, a Will Jordan start, Bowden Barrett finish, that's like a very scary prospect for other teams in my eyes. That's just not fair. That's cheating. <laughs> Calling you out now, that's cheating. <laughs> There's so much going on with that All Blacks team. Like, Ardis Savia just carrying six England players <laughs> on his back in the first half. Yeah, why not? How good is Mark Talia, though? For for a finisher, anyway. He's just, he's just there all the time. Not there in the defence, though, because Marcus Smith found that hole twice with beautiful crossfield kicks. Manuel Feoboso, though. Oh! He's just made for... I think it was you that said it, Andy, that he's made for international rugby. Yeah. I, I don't... It's crazy to think that, like, they were talking about dropping him in to start against Ireland during the Six Nations, and a lot of the, the commentary around it was like, it is, you know, do we want to drop him in at the deep end like this? And he's just been amazing yeah. Yeah, she ever did since. Yeah. Yeah, some people... I, I, do you know what, as well? really enjoyed Tommy Freeman with the very rare over-the-head catch. Yeah, for the... Finish, nice. for the for the second one you don't oh. see that that often <laughs> I like went out into the crowd to like get some footage of like the halftime whistle thinking it was going to be all blacks leading going into halftime <laughs> the crowd would be jovial I like had my camera up and just got the crossfield kick and a bunch of ponds standing up being like <laughs> it was so unfortunate what was the but mood yeah, like was... in the stadium at halftime uh tense yeah tense yeah I think so much at stake and even like the players were saying afterwards you know oh yeah we talk about it you know not really being that much pressure but it's huge pressure and it definitely mm. comes into your mind in the last you know 15 minutes when you're behind or when you're playing most of the game from behind um no it was tense and I think Kiwis for all that the Poms made lots of uh comments about how you know Eden Park itself isn't that intimidating the crowd isn't that intimidating I think we put in a pretty good showing as fans on Saturday, but people were certainly nervous because it did, like, England had it in their hands. They really did, and it just came down mm. to that final kind of stretch of the game, as it always tends to do with the All Blacks. We love it. We love this. <laughs> Can it continue, though? Because I imagine you've got, like, the box at Eden Park or something like that. I mean, look, we're very proud of the Eden Park record. It is a freakish record right like we have beaten a lot of very good teams but I'm not naive enough to think or to ignore the fact that NZ Rugby probably schedules quite strategically with who they play at Eden Park we don't have the box there this season we're playing both our tests against the box away um, okay. I think it's Cape Town which is essentially a home game um, and then might be Ellis Park <laughs> it is essentially a home game because that's where all the South African fa people who are All Blacks fans are. Um, <laughs> they all are. Do you know this? I'm sure you know the story about that. But no, no, no. Fill me in. <laughs> well, just that. So so during apartheid, um, obviously, the Springboks didn't allow men of colour to play in their team. But the All Blacks did. We had Māori and Pacifica playing in our team. So a lot of South Africans became fans of the All Blacks during the apartheid era. Um, yeah. And that's why you see so many South African All Blacks fans because of that. And a lot of people have kept it in their families for a really long time. So you'll see that there are South Africans who don't support the Springboks and they wholeheartedly support the All Blacks, which I think is why it is that it adds an extra layer to that rivalry that's been so long standing. Because obviously the Springbok tour and in New Zealand and everything. So sorry. That's true. That's that is awesome. I, thought, I never knew that. <laughs> I thought when you said it's like practically a home game, it's because like you just beat the show with them on that, on that <laughs> ground. that's what I thought you meant no, no it's that's because there's so many All Black supporters in South Africa oh, uh, sorry well, in Cape Town that's, be that's a better reason than what I thought so yeah, yeah I like that <laughs> that's really good is, is there a lot of excitement about Ratama because he was good when he came on yeah 
I thought he did great. And Finlay is just, he was actually not bad, I thought. Mm. He had that amazing play at the back of the scrum, um, trapping Earl. Defensively, we know he's good, but unfortunately, mm. he doesn't quite have the right balance of like that alongside the service. And Blatima came on, obviously Bodhi came on around the same time and the attack generally shifted, but you notice that um, insertion of pace. So I imagine he'll be rewarded with a start this weekend against Fiji. Mm. And I think that when Roy guards fit, which it's sounding like October, then our three halfbacks will be Roy guard, Kinanada, Blatima. And I think it's a pretty good triple threat. It's not bad. bad. <laughs> What did you make of him, Murray? Because that would have been one of your first times seeing him aside from Super. I I enjoyed it. He was I enjoyed him through the Super season. So he was really good. Him and Mackenzie obviously gelled really well together. But yeah, it was, it's, it's exciting. He's a quicker nine. I do like. I don't like the slow, old school nines. And it's nothing against Finley Christie if that's what your style is. Then fair. But I like uh right. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Snap. Dummy, run, whatever. Just try and do all your, almost do it yourself, sort of thing. And Ratama ticks more of those boxes than Finley Christie does, even though Finley Christie's Scottish, technically. <laughs> <laughs> I had to explain that one to Andy during the, during the week, but yeah. I didn't but know how, he was actually born in Scotland. I thought he just born, had um, born in heritage. Scotland. No, yeah. no. Born in Scotland, and yet never picked him up. Didn't even like there was no <laughs> sniff of them over here. There was sniff of Hugh Jones, but Hugh Jones is actually born in Edinburgh, but obviously made his name at the Stormers, got capped, came across here. I thought that was going to be the same thing as Finlay Christie because I remember watching him like a few years ago and it came up like he's actually born in Scotland. And the minute I heard it, I was like, Townsend's watching, Townsend's gonna like <laughs> let him have this season, we're gonna. Call him up on like a summer tour or an autumn test, have him against like Tonga, nothing too major. And then he's going to sign for Edinburgh or Glasgow and he's going to really chop on from there. No, he got called up in the All Bucks like first season. I was like, well, well, that's that then. <laughs> yeah, you can't compete with that. <laughs> the minute it came up that like he was called up, I was like, and we've lost him. <laughs> he ain't coming over. <laughs> but yeah, no. All Blacks, England, great series. England should actually keep their head high because, yes, they lost 2-0, but, my God, you were so close. Twice. It was ridiculous. The line-out, especially, I don't know if that's just because the All Blacks one was not good at all, (laughs) but Maru Toji seems back to his best and being a nuisance. George Martin is just an absolute freak on a leash. Ben Earl is like a supernatural athlete. How many back rowers do you see have a pace like a winger and <laughs> kick like a fullback? It's not fair. He's a cheat code. And Finn Baxter, who's going to be a generational talent, who's like 22 years old and he's an international prop. It's, <laughs> it's mental. It's crazy. There's, um, something, there's something down at the stoop for Twicken, uh, for Quinns because they've had Jason Leonard, Joe Marler, and now they've got Finn Baxter. So... Fair play. Whoever's going there, it's working for them. But yeah, I enjoyed the series. Because there was no like trash talk in the, in the build-up. <laughs> Just good old school, clash of Titans rugby. I don't know. Did you see Borthwick at the press conference talking about New Zealanders giving him shit? I was surprised. Yes, that felt so like funny. quite out of character for him. They were very... Yes. He that. was quite jovial in the presser. And I thought it was like... Maybe he was just super stoked that the tour was over and he could go home after such a long <laughs> and hard season. But he was really cracking them. But I just can picture him getting stuck in the lift in the hotel, as he said, with like some Kiwi who was like, bro, you're going to get absolutely whipped on the weekend. <laughs> you spanked. Our All Blacks are going to put it to you. And he's obviously just such a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, I can just picture him sitting there nodding and kind of being like, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. And they did, you know, like you say, I think before this series started, we talked about it and it was like, if England can go there and put up two good performances, I don't mm-hmm. think it will feel like a huge loss. And it doesn't feel like a huge loss. And I think the world has certainly set up and took notice of how quickly Steve Forthwick has turned this team around and kind of rebranded it entirely. And they're finding what their DNA is. And it's scary to me. <laughs> By 2027... Can you picture what this team is going to be like? So well drilled, 
innovative, exciting, but also super powerful and able to revert to kind of those typical England tactics and strategies that we're used to. It's, but still yeah, not quite comfortable. <laughs> he said Hawk boy. <laughs> it feels like they just need to make a couple of tweaks. Like, I think when Cunningham South goes off and they bring Curry on, they don't have a carrier for that last 20 minutes and you really notice it. So they kind of got to figure something out there. And they There's probably got to get a bit fitter just to, so they can do the rush defense and still attack for 80 minutes as well. But I, I guess that comes with time. But if they can sort out those two problems, scary prospect. There, there was a few of the same comment that kept coming in online after the game. And it was like, why doesn't England just have Finn Smith at 10 and Marcus at fullback? I was like, hmm. <laughs> and when they said it, I was like, I don't know. There's no good reason why they don't do that. Um, the high ball is the reason. Yeah, but like for the quick for the quick defense as well, because Freddie Stewart, I know because Freddie Stewart's bigger and he's a bit stockier, so it's it's harder for him to like on a quick turn. Whereas Marcus could probably just yeah go. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, They're probably I, I, it's, it's, fun. it's a big risk to do in a big game, you know. Like Smith is more than capable, but he doesn't play fifteen very often. Like if you're if you're Bowden Barrett or Damian McKenzie and you see Finn Smith come on and Marcus Smith move to fullback, you're thinking like I'm just gonna drop that on top of him every opportunity I get and we'll send the big lads after it. So I do see why they don't do it. I think like if rugby was a video game, absolutely you'd have Finn and Marcus both in there. You know what I mean? Because what they're both able to do. But yeah. Where Fair does enough. George Ford fit in? He does he comes back. I, th I think he's going to struggle. Like, well, not done done, but he's going to struggle to get back in. Mm. Maybe come off the bench now and again. Like when he's fit, have him as maybe over Finn Smith, just as the experience. But then mm. Finn Smith is <clears throat> so good. Like He's fantastic, especially I mean, if you've ever seen a Northampton Saints game. He carries that team. And he's, me and you have said it time and time again, Andy. It's like... He's it's like he's thirty five, but he's not. Yeah. Only, yeah, yeah. It's like he's been playing for years, and he's only 22, 23 years old. Yeah, I doubt some depth at ten for England. Oh yeah, they, they certainly don't have to worry about that. That's that's awesome to watch, but you can't pick them all, and that's what I keep saying. Especially when I do combined fifteens, and you get people commenting, <laughs> "What about this player?" But this player is really good. Yeah, I can't pick everyone. Essentially, I'm not doing like a seven-one spot on the bench in a mid <laughs> world. It's not. It's not happening. I think I did like my test, my team of the the series, the summer series, and I've technically picked five fullbacks because they could all play fullback. <laughs> I'm like, that's not my fault that they're all versatile. It makes it a lot easier. Hypothetical, <laughs> there was an injury in this make believe Why not? But yeah, <clears throat> that's like the black ferns on the weekend named three number eights as the Lucy's because the Lucy situation is just so stacked. There's three number eights. It was wild. I mean, it worked. I didn't see the scores. It like, did work. 62-0. 62-0, no. yeah. Jeez. Wow. Then it really worked. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was disappointing for the obvious. But I digress. I digress. I feel like you found your segue there, um, Murray, with the 7-1 split comment. <laughs> I think yeah, it worked. Well, it didn't work this week, did it? Because here in Frawley, I mean, he has to be t he has to be starting at ten for a So come on now, like, like he... how is your bottle? You know, <laughs> when you've had a high profile and, and not a miss, but he was unlucky to miss that one in the Champions Cup final, yeah. which mm -hmm. like, you know, for some people you might think would put them off trying it again, and, and two. yeah, two. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you and you can literally see him. When they're setting up for that final line out, the camera went close in on him and he turns around to talk to the back line and he's just saying no, two yeah. phases, two phases and a drop goal. That's all we're doing. Um two phases and a drop it, yeah. Oh. You just love seeing that kind of like clear headed decision making. Um God you know, it's God. crazy that we've we lost Johnny Sexton at the end of the World Cup. Mm. We barely noticed him being gone with Crowley, and, and now you've got Frawley stepping up and being like, well, What about me? What about me? Yeah, I think <laughs> I think it's a better option. Uh, there's nothing against Jack Crawley; he's very good at what he does. But I think Frawley needs needs to start, especially at Leinster. Yeah, so I think show Andy Farrell like, look, 
you don't have to pick Jack. Like I am here. I am the option. <laughs> yeah. He can't but, be he can't be starting for Ireland if he's not starting at Leinster. <laughs> and like Crowley's really done a lot in that shirt. Like a lot of Ireland fans actually there's quite a lot of complaining about him, which I don't see myself. But yeah, the, the yeah. ideal scenario would be to get Frawley first choice at Leinster, Crowley first choice at Munster, Prendergast, however you want to handle that, you know, he can stay at Leinster and, and play half the games or whatever, but, but now it just seems like, like an obvious an obvious hierarchy. You've also now got Joshuani coming in to Connaught, which yeah, <laughs> fair. It was Ella that broke that news, so fair <laughs> point on that. And he's I don't think he Irish he's Irish. I tried to like because the tweet I saw before it was announced was like uh, Joshuani coming to Connacht, and then um, that he potentially you know played a game for the All Blacks, Māori, but uh, potentially has Irish links. But I've looked into what these Irish links are, and I don't think they exist. So he'd have to go residency <laughs> route. All right, which is a long time. <laughs> but you still got Crowley versus Crowley, and it's awesome. And I mean, the game was really good. Not not very often is this sequel better than the original. And <laughs> in my eyes, it was. So <clears throat> more physical, I've, anyway. Yeah. I've watched it back. Jeez, uh, oh, I've watched the last 20 minutes with my dad back like four times. But um, <laughs> I've watched the game back and. It's, cra- it's It was a crazy game because with 10 minutes to go, like South Africa had it sewn up. Like I yeah. think the, the review meeting yesterday, I wish the Chase and the Sun cameras were in there because I reckon Razzy turned the hairdryer on. Like I reckon yeah. it was brutal because they really threw it away. Um, it was there for them. You know, they had a, they had a scrum. There was a scrum basically on the Irish 22 with 90 seconds to go. Yeah, and and they've ended up. That's the most un South Africa thing ever. But you know they'll learn from that. Um, oh, hundred percent. And it completely passed me by as well because the game was so intense at the time. But like they didn't score a try, you know. <laughs> Andre Pollock, <laughs> that's a hell of an achievement as well. Eight for yeah. eight off the tee, but that's why he's the ice man, I suppose. Mm. That's what it does. And I think and... so much of it comes down to: Do you win the physical battle in the first fifteen minutes, which Ireland did this time? Like. Mm-hmm. I was talking to my dad about it. You know, the first play in the first test, Joe McCarthy carries into Quagga Smith and Smith absolutely smashes him and, and dislodges the ball and it sets yeah. the tone for the whole game. The first play of this game, I think it was Ronan Kelleher, absolutely polax Quagga Smith and he dropped the ball and it sets the tone for those first 15 minutes. And if you win that early battle and you get ahead on the scoreboard, you know, like South Africa lost the game in the first half an hour, like being 10 points behind is what killed them in the end because they came on so strong in the second half. They should have been able to, if they'd left themselves an achievable gap, then Ireland wouldn't have been in it in the last minute. But yeah, just a crazy game. And one where both teams will look at it. South Africa will be like, well, we should have won it. Ireland will look at it and be like, well, we were the better team. But it could have gone either way. Could have gone either way. (laughs) It's never (laughs) going to end. And everyone in Andy's comments will say, that's not a drop goal. Oh, (laughs) you you read my mind, Ella. Drop goal gate is the funniest thing I have ever seen, without a doubt. I couldn't believe it. I didn't get um, much. I didn't get much of the drop goal issue. I did get Robert Colby dived. I'm like, oh, shut up. <laughs> I've, got like... South African, I've got South African saying that Bayon knocked Colby. I've got Irish saying Colby died. I'm like, I don't care. I couldn't care less. <laughs> I, had to, I also had, I don't know if you've seen it, I had to establish last week that I'm not Irish. <laughs> I had to explain that very detailed that I'm not Irish last week. Someone because... thought I was Irish in my comments, actually. Today. <laughs> I was like, no, no. People are just looking for it everywhere. You know the <laughs> one, the one that I actually thought in, in the final drop goal, the Colby thing is, is a bit silly. Like Doris is being a shithouse, but there's there's no way he needed to go to ground like that. The the other one, the Snyman one, is interesting because McCarthy is not subtle at all <laughs> about trying to get in his way, and he doesn't really hit him in the end. But that one I saw, and I was like, "Geez, that was a bit risky." Like, yeah, I don't don't know if he needed to do that. But this, like, it's it's like football, isn't it? This like forensic analysis of tiny details after the game, and I think it's the tone of it as well. Like, it's it's one thing to say, like, "Well, look." Maybe a few things went against us, but ultimately you lose the game. It's another thing to be like, <laughs> look at all these, uh, look at all these instances, and to pretend that 
Like the idea that someone can score two drop goals in a match and none of the refereeing team, none of the opposition <laughs> players, none of the pundits, the former players who are doing coverage, none of the fans in the stadium, nobody notices that the ball didn't hit the ground and that it's only looking at it on the TV afterwards is insane. I can't believe people are trying to sell that. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a new it level, it's a new level of like victim. Like, look at us. We, we got beat because the referee didn't see it. We <laughs> yeah. won. But it was, it was your video, because obviously you got a lot of comments, Andy, about it. And I'm, I've seen your video, and I'm just like, what are we looking at? Yeah. <laughs> it quite clearly bounced. It's it okay. so funny, because I made the video, and so many people were commenting on my just my reaction video. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go and look at this. And they all just said the drop goal. So I thought they all meant the winning drop goal. So I went and looked at the winning drop goal. And then people start commenting on that one, being like, oh, this is the wrong drop goal, as though that makes it less stupid. Do you know, yeah. it's <laughs> we all saw it. <laughs> it's the add... first time I've ever seen you barred up in your comments as well, like yeah. barring back at people because you're just like, "What? Are we are we looking at the same thing? How can you see something <laughs> different here? We've both got eyes." It's just crazy. Like I've never seen, <laughs> like it's a new level of. Stupidity, I'm gonna say. Yeah, I've, oh, I've got yeah. to think a lot of it's got to just be people trolling. Like, I can't imagine everybody doing it as being serious, but I don't know. God, it's um, it's just crazy. Like, uh, you learn quick that people, like, especially because we all do TikTok, the co- some of the comments you get are just wild. <laughs> there, there was one, got- I'm not go on, Ella. There's a, there, I could tell this is gonna be a bad one. <laughs> Someone. <laughs> Called me a make a wish kid on my video. I'm coming to the oh life. my god! <laughs> <laughs> I have to laugh because it's kind of funny, but I was like, "Whoa, that's so bold." That is funny, no, but is. very mean. <laughs> there was, I'm it's not so going, mean. But... <laughs> I'm not going into much detail with it because I know where Ella stands on it, and I get her point. But it was from the first test from the uh, All Blacks game, and somebody mm-hmm. went, "Don't you dare talk shit about number 14. Oh, and, yeah. you're like, and you're like, I just said I'm not talking about him because of what he's done. And this guy just kept going, yeah, but you don't, don't disrespect that player ever again. I'm like, mate, you shut <laughs> up. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, I was like, you probably don't want me to talk about him. Like, if I did talk about him, sure. But I didn't say anything. I just said, not talking about that player, sorry. <laughs> <Yeah. sighs> the world is very weird. It's very weird. Like I, I don't know if Andy gets it because they might think he's Scottish. I get a lot. Of, <laughs> I get a lot of requests talking about shirt hog, and I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. I can't. There's guidelines Actually, for a reason. I can't talk about that. <laughs> I got one funny one yesterday. Uh, right. Some South African fan privately messaged me to tell me that I was a poop hole in Afrikaans. <laughs> I didn't know that was like a common, <laughs> a common thing that people say. <laughs> You definitely made me laugh. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but yeah, um, we've, we've went completely off track now because it's this. See what I mean? It was a great test game and everyone <laughs> ruined it by the comments. <laughs> Ireland won. It was a famous victory. I did have a question because it was, it was drop goal based. Ella, you can answer it, but I feel like it's more suited for Andy because he's Irish. But what is the more iconic drop goal? Was it O'Gara? <laughs> Versus Wales, Sexton versus France, or Frawley versus South Africa? Oh, jeez. It's a good question. They're all up there. No, that's, that's a PR answer, that. <laughs> I'm, well, what I mean is, is it's tight. I'm not I'm not throwing it out. But, I mean, I like the O'Gara. The O'Gara one. Well, because the Sexton one started a Grand Slam. Uh, the, the O'Gara, O'Gara and the... One, yeah. yeah th- those two, I think, because there's a trophy in the mix, are above... The Frawley one is clutch, don't get me wrong, but like it is to win a summer, although only our second ever win. Mate, it's so you hard mean, to choose. <laughs> you mean you don't care about the castle, lager, whatever it's called? <laughs> it's the our castle. second ever win in South Africa, you know? Like, that's that is historic. That point. I had to make that point, I'm not with you. Because really I was historic. like, I said, I want to get a famous victory in South Africa, because it is. You've just said it's only the second time winning. And somebody commented like, Hardly a famous victory. It's like you've won twice. <laughs> yeah, ever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just just a great game. And 
uh, great to see. You know, there's been a lot of people uh, for like Irish fans calling for them to try Burn at six for a while now because he mm. played six a lot more than second row when he first got into the Ireland team. True, um, yeah. And it's added like a whole extra domain. Like we all love Peter Romani, but four or six, mm. he's a bit of a throwback now, right? Like he's not yeah. the biggest guy. He's more of a shit house, and he does stuff that you kind of increasingly can't get away with in games. So, and the main thing is just international rugby has just become like a bruiser fest, right? Like if you're not as big and strong as the other team, like you may as well pack up and go home. So this <laughs> additional uh, way awesome. of playing with Burn at six and then two two of the big lads in the second row. Um, it's oh, definitely like a yeah a new type and just like Burn is just an animal like the guy can play 80 minutes he can switch positions in the pack like so impressive <laughs> is this I did ask you this when the squad got announced but do you think this is like them fading Peter Romani out like, yeah I think so we're not getting rid of you completely you can come off no the no well I mean and he had a big impact off the bench because he, he made the tackle on Van Staden that turned the yeah. ball over and got us the scrum that Frawley uh, kicked and went from. And if that doesn't happen, we don't have a way back into the game. So, like, a huge impact still. Um, so, yeah. It, you know, and, and an amazing servant for Ireland as well. Someone texted me. I was like, God, Peter Romani was good when he came on. And someone texted me. He's always the best player in the world right after he's been dropped. And I think, like, it really lights a fire under him. And you always get a, a good performance from him. Maybe what you want as well. Like it's not. I, I don't. <clears throat> I do like it when players get competition in, in position because if you ha, if you don't, you get complacent and you become really. You'll be great for your club to get back into the international setup, but then you're a bit crap because there's nobody actually competing. Yeah, I mean, with him, I kind of doubt that. <laughs> I'll be no, honest no, with him. No, no, he seems no, like a savage, no, but I know what you mean. You yeah. want the, the the setup to have as much competition for every place as possible, so no one ever quite feels safe, and yeah. everyone's giving it one hundred and ten percent every time they play, for sure. Well, we've got some rugby this weekend, so we can do quick predictions, quick fire, because they're not big games, and I'm not trying to sound harsh to anyone competing. They're going to be fun, but there's not massive games. You've got, I believe, you've got Japan versus Italy. I imagine Italy's getting that one because. Oh, he's a good team. Japan has Eddie Jones. <laughs> We've said that already. But who <laughs> do you think? Yeah, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with you there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, way. Um I think we've got well we've got Chile versus Scotland. Obviously, Scotland's gonna get the win. Sorry, Chile. Just not ready yet. Um, we've got Fiji versus the All Blacks, which is going to be fun, but it's in San Diego for reasons. Why is it in San Diego? 2031 World Cup, I reckon. Oh, yeah, because the host did so well at the weekend. No. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All Blacks, yeah. You could rotate that, and it's still going to be a fairly comfy win. Yeah, I think um, it was our, um, announced today Patrick Tuukulotu staying at home just to rest that knee. So I think you'll see Sam Derry in the lineup for the first time. Might like be that. familiar to some, the Blues lock. He's a big boy. Um, and obviously we've got some line-out issues to fix. So that'll be good. I hope the Fijians will be up to it. They'll be up oh. for it. Don't fight San Diego. Why not? Put in, put in Fiji. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> We'd probably <lose> there. <laughs> <laughs> Who else have we got? We've got Georgia versus Australia, which we talked about. We all think Australia, but Georgia won't go down without a fight. Yeah. We've got, we've got Portugal versus South Africa. That's a great game. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a very rotational squad from the Springboks, obviously. But I think there'll, there'll be a backlash, though. Yeah. You don't oh. want to play a team like that right after they've been beaten. Tongo full work. He's got to do it, hasn't he? Seven one on the bench, full work. Police <laughs> deep to tight. What a big then, day for oh. Scotland for that test, Murray Holly Davidson refereeing. Ooh, yeah. She's First such woman a good to ever take charge of a Springboks test, which is massive. I love, I love Holly Davidson. Great referee. She's great. Um. 
Is there another games? I don't think there is. I think that's it. I could be wrong. See what I mean? They're not advertised like, at all. <laughs> no, no, we have Wales versus the Reds. Oh, the Reds, yes. Oh, yeah. Australia B. <laughs> uh, what, what's, the, what's the Reds a one? Tom Jones impersonator at halftime. I felt it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the real thing. I can't. I sent it to my parents. I was like, "Oh my god, Tom Jones playing the Red Show." And my dad was like, "Is this real?" And I was like, "What do you mean?" He said, "Look at it and the thing because it said like Tom Jones, but at the top it said Australia's best and in the person there down the bottom, and I just completely missed it. I was like, "How did they get Tom Jones?" <laughs> dad said, "It doesn't even look like it." <sighs> Not really yeah, sure. The Reds. The Reds. That is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I saw I'll Squidge. send you the picture so you can put it in here. <laughs> I saw I'll Squidge try. tweeting saying, just terrified for the Reds game. <laughs> Surely Wales are winning. Surely. Come on. I think it's just one of those things where it's like, it's a banana skin, isn't it? Like, there's no good outcome for Wales. Like, if they win, of course they're supposed to win. And if they don't win well, it's just more <laughs> questions and more speculation around Wales. So <laughs> I can see why people would be nervous around it. But yeah, you would think they'll win. Did they not lose to the Chiefs the last time they did a tour like this? The Chiefs or the Blues? It was one New Zealand franchise that beat Wales. It I'm was thinking. the Chiefs, was which the is Chiefs. ironic. <laughs> yeah. Given... In New Zealand, losing to a New Zealand franchise is more excusable, though. For sure. Is it? I mean, just. <laughs> just. It's still club rugby. Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be a weird weekend, but I think we're pretty much done and dusted for the season there's not much to dive into for the time being and have a few weeks off still have interviews yeah. I have got some I've got some lined up but as you as well know it's trying to get time and place and time zone time zone actually no this one's alright it's UK based I'm okay same time zone for this one but for, for the ones I try and get it's not easy it's either staying up late or getting up really early You'll you get questions in because I like your contribution. And we've all interviewed Ben O'Keefe now, so there you go. <laughs> we share Ben guy. now. Great guy. I love Ben. He was a great guy. And great interview. Good laugh. Um, yeah. But this has been the Rugby Connection podcast. This is Summer Tour recap. Not really counting the rest because it's not publicized at all. Nobody's talking about the games that we've just mentioned. So. We'll have to, we'll have stuff to talk about over on TikTok anyway. But yeah, it's fun. Great games, great rugby. More please. <laughs> yeah. Make you know a three test, make a three test series. We should have had three test series. What's really cool though is the opening game in November for New Zealand and England is New Zealand and England. So it's such a shame it didn't finish one one. It would have been amazing if that was a decider. <sighs> well, I yeah. thought everyone was getting a repeat leg, but I didn't realize that no. Springboks and Ireland weren't. Like Wales yeah. and Aussie are doing another go, England, Australia, uh, New Zealand are doing another go, but I couldn't understand it. I was like, oh no, I'm sure there's a November test. Why is everyone so upset that it's 1 1, but it's literally going <laughs> to stay 1 1? You have, until you, have next to year. you have to wait a year to go again. The social media oh, nonsense what? will continue yeah. for another year. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. Oh. I had I re- <laughs> five summer tours that I want to see next year and I was going to do a video on it and then I went doesn't matter because the Lions on next year so half yep. that one half yeah <laughs> 2026 could be interesting because I think what was it I did I did well France is going to New Zealand anyway even though uh, yeah. it's going to be a bloodbath because Fabian Gauti has already said that they don't care about the summer yeah. which is stupid I've said Scotland versus Australia I've got. I think I had. Oh, wait, hang on. Answer. Isn't twenty six when the global season starts? Don't we have like? Oh, the league. Yeah. Oh, you've ruined my fun now. That's yeah, like, mate. This is this is the fun. last proper summer tour. We like we've just lived through the last proper summer tour because it's the Lions and next ours, year. And ours was the Americas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. We Jesus. all have all black Springbok tours to look forward to in twenty twenty. That's true. That's true. <laughs> And we've got the rugby championship coming up. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Are we covering that? Just I know we're we're still technically recording, but are we do you want to cover that? <laughs> I'm there. I'm gonna be making TikToks, so Yeah, I know, but well that's fine then, because it's not a season finale. 
if we're covering the rugby championship, this is <laughs> when does it start? Uh, August, so you got a little bit of time. Oh, that's good. Oh, nice have, to have a, have a nice break. Have a break. Have a yeah. Break, then, yeah. Well, we've got the Olympics as well. So. Oh, geez, <laughs> yeah. You're Never ends. It's going to be a, it's going to be all year. I'm just going to have to insert the new season number somewhere down the line. Figure it's it out. There's no off week. Just running at this point, yeah. No, it's getting very <laughs> But yeah, summer tour is finished forever, apparently. Because <laughs> we're going to a totally different setup soon. But it's fun because we like chatting. We like talking about rugby. We like talking shit about Eddie Jones. Apparently, it was the. <laughs> This episode, so yeah, Ella, Andy, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. I'm glad having yeah, thanks, mate. And I'm glad we've got time different sorted out because Sally me thought New Zealand was 24 hours ahead, not 12. But <laughs> I don't know why I thought that. Flight, that is a 24 hour flight, yes. <laughs> that, that's, that's stopping and changing and all that as well. Of course. Yeah, it's actually longer. I've done on my way to the UK like 31 hours. It's gnarly, gnarly. Oh. Jeez, but great, great chat as always. And if you like what we do, we're on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to get notified for great content like this. <laughs> if you like Ella, she's on TikTok at Ella Ferguson Five Five for Sam White Box. Yes, there we go. Andy is of course on TikTok at Rugby Nas. Give him a follow because he's absolutely smashing it on over fifty thousand followers. To the point, if my video king, does well, king. to the point, if my video does well, it comes up the search bar, rugby knows. Can't, you send me screenshots of that all the time. I always feel guilty. I haven't done anything, and I always I feel know, guilty. You, I'm just like, <laughs> come on, man. The one video that really popped off in the search bar for you. And I'm like, really? Come on. <laughs> and if you like what I do, doesn't matter, because you know, if it does well, it's going to go to Andy's page anyway. <laughs> if you like what I do, <laughs> it's plus for rugby HQ. Please follow, because we're getting there. But if you like the pod, we're on YouTube, we're on Spotify, we're all on Instagram. Like, share, follow, comment, put questions in, ask us stuff, I don't know, get, into, get involved. But this has been a Rugby Connection podcast, and we might see you I don't know yet, but we'll have a good one anyway. See you.